Consider this. You wake up one morning and your body's security team, the normally heroic immune system, has suddenly gone rogue. Instead of chasing down nasty germs and viruses, it's decided that the protective coating on your nerves, a fatty stuff called myelin, looks suspiciously like a public enemy. So it attacks. This, my friends, is the microscopic mayhem we call multiple sclerosis, or MS. But who convinced the immune system to turn on its own team? For decades, scientists have been playing the world's most complicated game of Clue, trying to figure out what causes this neurological mystery. Was it Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick, or something far, far stranger? The truth is, pinning down the cause of MS is like trying to nail jello to a tree. It's slippery, it's messy, and just when you think you've got it, the whole thing wobbles and falls apart. Researchers have gathered a mountain of clues, pointing fingers at everything from your family tree to where you spent your childhood vacations. It's a whodunit of epic proportions, involving genetic suspects, environmental accomplices, and a whole lot of scientific head-scratching. We're going to dive into this mystery, but be warned. The answer isn't as simple as one single villain. It's more like a conspiracy, a whole crew of culprits working together to pull off the perfect crime. Imagine your body is a high-tech fortress. Your immune system is the elite squad of guards patrolling the walls, checking IDs, and keeping out intruders. In MS, it's as if these guards suddenly can't read their own security manual. They start seeing friendly nerve cells as dangerous invaders and launch a full-scale, misguided attack. This damages the myelin sheath, which is like the rubber insulation around an electrical wire. When that insulation gets frayed, the electrical signals from your brain can get scrambled, short-circuited, or blocked entirely. This can lead to all sorts of symptoms, from blurry vision to wobbly legs. But why? What programmed this friendly fire into the system? Let's set the stage for our grand investigation. We have two main groups of suspects. In one corner, we have the genetic gang, a lineup of suspicious DNA codes passed down through generations. In the other corner, we have the environmental crew, viruses, sunshine, and even bad habits. For a long time, scientists thought one of these groups had to be the sole perpetrator. But as we'll see, the real story is that they're likely in cahoots, working together in a complex plot that we are only just beginning to unravel. So put on your detective hats because we're about to interrogate the evidence. Science is cool. First up in our game show of medical mysteries, let's welcome the genetic gauntlet. The biggest clue that genes are involved comes from studying twins. Identical twins share nearly 100% of their DNA, like perfect photocopies of each other. So, if MS were purely genetic, you'd expect that if one twin has it, the other always would too. But that's not what happens. If one identical twin develops MS, the other twin only has about a 1 in 4 chance of also developing it. This is a huge clue. It tells us that genetics definitely loads the gun, but something else, something from the outside world, has to come along and pull the trigger. Now let's meet the star player on the genetic team, HLA-DRB1. Think of this gene as the head coach for a special team of immune cells. Its job is to teach these cells how to tell the difference between self, your own body cells, and non-self, like invaders such as bacteria and viruses. It's basically running a recognition training academy for your body's bouncers. Most of the time, this coach does a fantastic job, but some people have a specific version of the HLA-DRB1 gene that's a bit eccentric. It's a slightly clumsy coach. This quirky version can sometimes make mistakes during training. It's a classic case of mistaken identity. The immune cell sees myelin and thinks, aha, an intruder, and sounds the alarm. Next up, give a big round of applause for the environmental elimination round. These are the outside factors that might be pulling that trigger we mentioned. First on our list is a surprising contestant, geography. Scientists noticed a strange pattern. MS is far more common in countries that are farther away from the equator. Think Canada, Northern Europe, the Northern United States. It's much rarer in sunny places like Ecuador or Thailand. This led to a bright idea. Could it be about sunlight? Your skin uses sunlight to make vitamin D. Vitamin D also helps regulate the immune system. So the theory goes that less sun exposure means lower vitamin D levels. Especially during childhood, low vitamin D might make the immune system more trigger-happy and prone to mistakes. 
It's like the immune system supervisor went on a permanent vacation to a cloudy beach, leaving the guards to get restless and cause trouble. Furthermore, studies have shown that people who move from a high-risk area to a low-risk area before the age of 15 adopt the lower risk of their new home. But if they move as an adult, they keep the risk of their childhood home. Something in our early environment seems to set the stage. Our next environmental suspect is a ghost from the past, the Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV. This is an incredibly common virus. Most of us will be exposed to it at some point. It's the virus that causes mononucleosis, also known as the kissing disease. For most people, it's no big deal. Don't touch that dial. Whoa, what a showdown. We've had genes duking it out with geography and viruses playing mind games with our immune cells. If your brain feels a little scrambled right now, don't worry, it's not MS, it's just science. And if you're enjoying this deep dive into the wonderfully weird world of medical mysteries, then I have a very important, very scientific request for you. Down below this screen, you'll see a couple of buttons. One looks like a thumbs up, and the other says, subscribe. Go ahead, consider it an experiment in digital mechanics. Pressing that like button tells the mysterious algorithms of the internet that you find this stuff fascinating. It's like giving a little treat to the computer brain that helps other curious minds find our channel. And subscribing? That's even better. That's like signing up to be a full-time science adventurer with us. You'll get a notification every time we post a new video, so you'll never miss out on our next exploration into the bizarre and brilliant world of your own body. We're building a community of curious people just like you who believe that learning should be fun. Your subscription is more than just a click. It's your ticket to more mind-blowing science. So go on, click that subscribe button. It costs you nothing and it helps us continue our mission to make science accessible, engaging, and just plain awesome for everyone. All right, commercial break over. Thank you for your support. It means the world to us. Now let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. So, after all that, who's the final culprit? Is it the genetic gang with their faulty HLA DRB1 coach and their army of tiny gene accomplices? Or is it the environmental crew with their shady member, low vitamin D, Epstein-Barr virus, cigarette smoke. For years, scientists put them in a head-to-head -head battle, a veritable science smackdown. They ran the tests and crunched the numbers. They analyzed the data from every possible angle. After decades of intense investigation, they finally come to a conclusion. Are you ready for it? The big twist, there is no single winner. It's a tie, or more accurately, a conspiracy. The current leading theory, the two-hit or multi-hit hypothesis. Hit 1. Genetic Predisposition Your genes, especially HLA-DRB1, load the gun. Hit 2. At least one environmental trigger that pulls it. So, let's recap this incredible medical detective story. We learned that multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, where the body's own security guards get confused and attack the protective myelin coating on our nerves. We put the suspects on trial and found that there isn't one single bad guy. Instead, it's a team effort, led by the HLA-DRB1 gene. It acts like a clumsy coach for our immune cells. This team loads the gun, creating a genetic susceptibility to the disease. Then the environmental crew chimes in, where you live and how much sun you get, past infections like Epstein-Barr, and lifestyle choices like smoking. It's this combination, this perfect storm, that is our best explanation for what causes MS. Every new discovery brings us one step closer to better treatments, and maybe prevention. Stay curious, my friends.